Yeah, here we go. Oh, here's, oh, this is a really good one. All right, hi everybody, my name's Megan Anderson and I'm an extension field agronomist for Iowa State University. Uh, today we're out at our field extension education lab and I'm standing in our weed garden. Uh, I have three foxtail species here today that are all really common across the state of Iowa. And I just thought I'd quickly go over how uh, we can identify between the three of them. Um, so the three that we're gonna talk about are giant foxtail, which is right here. We have green foxtail in the middle and yellow foxtail. So let's start with yellow foxtail because I think that's the most different of the three. So yellow foxtail I think is the most different of the three species. Yellow foxtail seems like the species that shows up most in um, maybe like home yards and stuff. It might be something that we would run into more commonly uh, as opposed to the other foxtails that might show up in waste areas or crop fields. Um, so yellow foxtail, uh, one difference between uh, th this and the other two foxtails is it actually has a very flattened feeling to the stem. So if you look at the stem um, and you can see it from the other direction, if you try to roll it between your fingers at the base of the stem here, um, those sheaths are really flattened uh, and you can feel that. It also will typically have this kind of purple color. We don't usually like to use color a lot uh, to differentiate species, but that purple color is fairly characteristic for yellow foxtail compared with our other foxtails at least. Um, but the key feature that we need to be paying attention to is basically right in this collar region on our grasses. Um, so the yellow foxtail, if we pull this back, is going to have what we call a hairy ligule. So a very small fringe of hairs right where that leaf uh, meets the stem of the plant um, and turns into the sheath. And so you can see it, I could run my little finger through that. Uh, and then we wanna look for other characteristics. And so the important characteristic that we look for aside from that hairy um, ligule is that Yellow foxtail has very long hairs that are sparse, and they're typically only in the first couple inches right at the base of the leaf blade. So you can see that they're uh, very sparse, long hairs there. If I kind of move them in the light, maybe they're more visible. And then of course, this time of year, we start to see those species flower. And so this yellow foxtail has the largest seed of all the foxtails. Uh, it typically has the smallest seed heads. And a lot of times the awns that stick out uh, from the inflorescence will take on uh, kind of a yellow color when it matures. So it's difficult to see it here, but if we look over right here at some seed heads that have actually dropped their seed, you can see that they have that a really distinct yellow color. So the next one that we're gonna talk about is the giant foxtail. So that's this one right here with the really droopy head. And you can see there's actually a giant foxtail growing in uh, with the yellow foxtail right now. And so before it flowers, a uh, giant foxtail uh, can be distinguished from the other foxtails. Uh, by taking a real close look at, again, this collar region. So the first thing to distinguish it from the yellow foxtail, you can see that um, it's uh, round around the stem, right? We don't have it rolled in the sheath. If we look all the way down at the base of the plant, we'll see the same thing, that it's going to be able to be rolled uh, between our fingers. Uh, and if we look closely at this uh, sheath region, we'll notice a few things. Uh, the first of which is that this one also has a hairy ligule. Uh, so it's got a little fringe of hairs here that stick up when we pull that leaf sheet or that leaf away from the uh, stem of the plant. And then the other thing that we're going to look for is where else does it have uh, maybe hair on it. And so if we fold it over uh, my finger, that's probably the easiest way to see that it has uh, very dense hair on the upper side of that leaf blade. And so as far as our weedy grasses go, uh, this should be the only one that we'll run into that has this leaf blade covered with these long or fairly short but very, very dense hairs. And then another thing that you can notice here um, is that we al also want to look at other characteristics. And this isn't so important for this foxtail, uh, but you can see that it has hair all along the sheath margin. 
So where that sheath wraps around the blade, you can see that the margin of it actually has the hair as well. So you can actually feel it. Um, you can pull the leaf, right, and the sheath off the plant, and you can kind of unroll it and hold it up to the sun, right, if you need to be able to see it. On this one, it's so prominent that we can see it really easily with our naked eye. Uh, the other thing about the giant foxtail is it typically has the biggest seed heads of all uh, or inflorescences of all the foxtails and they are usually the droopiest. Um, so that can kind of cue you in late in the season to the fact that it might be a giant foxtail. The next one that we're actually going to talk about is the green foxtail which can easily be mistaken for giant foxtail and so that's why we need to look at these species up close in order to distinguish between them. So let's go look at the green foxtail. All right, so the last of our foxtail species is the green foxtail. Um, this species has by far the most variability uh, of all of the foxtail species. So when you're looking for green foxtail, we really need to look at those vegetative traits uh, because these inflorescences can look so different. So we might see very small inflorescences uh, like this one or very large inflorescences like some of these other ones. Uh, they can also take on uh, sometimes a purplish hue or even a white kind of coloration to them. So we want to make sure to look at the vegetative characteristics in order to distinguish them. So for the green foxtail, like I said, it's going to look very similar to the giant foxtail, uh, but we want to cue in again on this leaf uh, collar region. And so again, if we pull that leaf back, you can see this one also has that hairy ligule. Um, or the fringe of hairs right there where the leaf meets the uh, stem of the plant. It also has the hairs on the leaf sheath margin. So you can see that it's got kind of a lighter color there on that margin. Uh, the difference between this and giant, if you're looking at a plant without inflorescences on it, is if we fold that leaf blade over, you'll see that it has no hair on it, on either the upper or the lower um, edge of the leaf blade. So just to wrap up, we just discussed how to identify the three foxtail species that are really common here in Iowa. We might find them in anywhere from our home gardens all the way to our crop fields uh, or any kind of area that there might be a disturbance to the ground that this, these species are able to come in. Uh, we talked about giant foxtail, green foxtail, and then the yellow foxtail. Uh, so get out and start looking for them and make sure that you can get their identities correct. Yeah.